Right. Hello. Uh, this is my presentation on fake and possibly invalid dinosaurs. So this is just a little bit of a look through via some taxa of dinosaurs that were exist or were established at some point, but then were found out to be either mistakes or just confused or in some cases possibly fraud. So paleontology is a difficult science. You're working with a very, very incomplete record. Um, one of the museum's trustees, Richard Forrest, had a really good analogy where it's trying to piece together the entirety of what England looks like while on a train from London to Glasgow, only looking out the window for one minute. You're dealing with very little information, so mistakes are bound to happen. You have to extrapolate and guess a lot of information. Um, but yeah, this can lead to a lot of issues and can lead to the creation of dubious taxa and species. So this isn't a dinosaur, but Bacillosaurus was a good example of like a bit of an early mistake. Um, it was found by um, Richard Harlan, um, I think in the US, um, and then seemed to be a plesiosaur. He found a very streamlined aquatic animal with very sharp teeth, and because plesiosaurs and other marine reptiles were recently discovered, he assumed it was just an incredibly large version of that, and so named it Bacillosaurus, which means king lizard. Um, However, Richard Owen, one of the most famous paleontologists ever who um, founded the Natural History Museum, had a bit of a look at it and said, no, this, is actually, this isn't a reptile, this is actually a whale. Um, very early type of whale based on the teeth. And so we talked to Harlan, they had a bit of a friendly uh, discussion and Richard Owen decided to rename it to Zooglodon sidotes, which basically means yoke-toothed whale. Um, Despite the fact that Harlan agreed with this, for some reason the name never stuck. And so despite the fact that we know it's a very early whale, it's still called Bacillosaurus, the king lizard, and kind of has like a little family around it. Probably one of the most famous dinosaurs that we're still not quite sure if his dinosaur is Brontosaurus. This was found by uh, Othniel Charles Marsh, who is uh, one of the main leaders of, well, one of the main sides of a time period known as the Bone Wars, when um, different different paleontologists were trying to like dig up and collect as much fossils as they could, his main rival being Edward Cope. So he found a lot of sauropods, including a, pot a potosaurus, and then found another sauropod called Bron he, he named Brontosaurus. Um, he developed a skeleton for it quite quickly. Um, believe he developed it all quite quickly in order to bolster his collection as soon as possible. And so it was quickly put together and then given several mounts across the US. Um, because the record was very patchy, they essentially had to design a head for it. And so this is one of the examples of the artificial heads many of the mounts had. Um, it's a bit of a strange one. It was partially based on Chimerosaurus, but um, a lot of them, like this one, were a bit kind of a little bit slapped together. But it didn't matter, it had several mounts, it became quite popular and known to the public. Um, but even early on, and despite the fact that it was growing popularity, there was a lot of pushback throughout the years saying, this looks like maybe it's just another version of, a of the one of the original sauropods he found, Apotosaurus. And then more information was found that Apotosaurus had actually a different head, um, more like the Plodocus, not like Camarasaurus. And
So, yeah, um, it turns out it was um, a crayfish or an early type of uh, crustacean, and they just simply painted the legs on. And so that was a little embarrassment that was found out. Um, but unfortunately, this happens quite often, especially in that region. There's a lot of poor farmers. So, you know, when Western ponies all just come along, it's a relatively quick way to make a lot of money, which is very valuable. Um, so again, the same region, uh, the most famous fraud from that area is Archaeoraptor. Now, this was a bird and a dinosaur with dinosaur-like legs, tail, but powerful wings capable of flight. Um, fortunately, it turned out to be a stitched together fake. A uh, CT analysis found that um, this area was from a prehistoric full bird, so a fully developed Jurassic bird, and that the bottom half was made from, and other examples were made from various true dinosaur species, uh, especially Microraptor. So you can see these are the main two composites, Yenornis, which is a fully developed seabird, Ronosaur, raptor-like animal, and then they were just essentially stitched together to make this Archaeoraptor. Um, so yeah, the fallout from this was very bad. Um, it was, again, another embarrassment for National Geographic, the scientists who studied this. Um, it was a little bit of blow to the idea that um, birds could be theropod dinosaurs. Uh, Stores Olsen, which was one of the, um, the main curator for the Smithsonian Museum in regards to birds, uh, considered it a basically just an example of a proof, one of the, um, well, one of the uh, proves that this whole idea that birds could be dinosaurs was fake, which is a shame because we now know that birds are true theropod dinosaurs and stores would change his mind later if shown with more proper evidence. But it, it does make you concerned that, you know, fakes like this could be a huge blow to true progress and true advancement. So, um, yeah, it is a little bit of a disappointment. But these things happen. So now we get to probably the dinosaur that made me inspired me to do this whole presentation, which is Dakota Raptor, which is a raptor-like dinosaur from Hell Creek. So Hell Creek is a very famous uh, formation in America. Um, that's where you get all your big famous dinosaurs, your Triceratopses, your T-Rexes, um, your Edmontosauruses, your Ankylosauruses. So it's like one of the big formations. And it was described in 2015 by uh, the paleontologist Robert A. De Palma and was described as a large feathered dromaeosaur from the late Cretaceous. And it was over five meters long, probably a couple of meters high, one of the largest raptors ever found. Um, I think one of the, uh, probably the top three in size at the time. And it was a really
myself for a little bit because I just, you know, I liked raptors, I liked Jurassic Park, having a big raptor was really cool. Um, you know, one of the main questions we get in the museum is the velociraptor you have looks way smaller than it does in Jurassic Park. And a lot of the raptors and velociraptors were a lot smaller in real life. So having a big scary raptor was really cool. Um, unfortunately, a lot of issues started to appear quite quickly. Um, so a lot of dinosaurs, especially meat eating theropods, have wishbones. And a wishbone was found with the cooked raptor as well. But on closer inspection, a lot of scientists found that it wasn't actually a wishbone at all, it was actually part of the turtle shell. Um, so that is a bit of a concern. That happened in the same year that the, the, the um, uh, paper was published. So it was kind of a bit of a red flag, but you know, um, Robert De Palma and the people who found it quickly made a correction. So things were okay for the most part. But over the years, more and more issues start to appear. Um, a lot of these issues were um, kind of brought to the forefront or relayed by a paleontologist called Andrea Ku. And um, he pointed out that a lot of the bones found in the initial skeleton appeared to be or could easily have been from other types of dinosaurs. So this is a bit of caudal bone or like tail slash backbone. And he suggested that it seemed to be a bit more like an Ornithomimus, which is more like an ostrich omnivorous dinosaur that lived in the area. There's also issues with the um, tibia, which is leg bone, saying that it could be um, similar to other raptors, also another um, omnivorous, more bird-like dinosaur in the area. And then again, for the famous killing claw, saying that it has a lot of traits more similar to ornithomimids orn than um, a raptor. So a lot of these issues start to appear, a lot of people are questioning is this actually a real dromaeosaur, or are we just, or was it just pieced together? Um, Rob De Palma and his colleagues have um, come out against that and said, no, we have genuinely found this animal. These are genuine uh, dromaeosaur raptor bones we have. But there's a lot of questions in there. Um, we do know that we're pretty sure that the teeth found in a skeleton were from a raptor. So the the only other dromaeosaur here found in the Hell Creek area is a smaller little creature called Archeroraptor, um, who's only about you know more it's similar in size to Velociraptor, so a small animal, but still you know a deadly hunter. So there is an indication of either there is a different larger animal living in the area, or this small animal could get a lot bigger. Uh, maybe not the huge five point five meter long size as an issue described with Dakota Raptor, but there could be something. So there could be a Dakota Raptor-like animal there, but what we have now, I'm not sure who to say, um, a lot more stuff is needs to be clarified, but there's some issues with clarification. So yeah, Robert De Palma, the scientist who found it, who really big fan of Indiana Jones, he's named a couple of his sites after areas in Indiana Jones, like the Tannis sites, and he likes to have the um, leather cap on. Um, he's a bit infamous today. Um, he's um, one of his other major projects is an area in Hell Creek called Tanis that apparently has fossils of animals that died during the asteroid hit that killed off all the dinosaurs. Um, but there's a lot of questions with the data at the moment, and there is also some plagiarism and accusations from. Um, a stream of his, uh, uh, Melaina Dunning, who worked under him for a little bit, but a lot of her data seems to have appeared in his paper, which he has published quite quickly. So it's under a lot of scrutiny of what exactly is going on here, um, whether this is a genuine you know, site that details how animals died in the impact. Um, it doesn't help that before everything was fully finished, uh, Robert Palmer got involved with David Attenborough and produced a documentary about the death of the dinosaurs, which we have a copy of here. So, it's similar to, personally, in my opinion, similar to what happened with Martian Cove back in the dinosaur, um, the Bone Wars. A lot of scientists today try to like find an interesting discovery, get it published as soon as possible, get it recognized as soon as possible, get David Attenborough on it before anything can actually be checked. 
And so it becomes a lot harder to disprove or like take away that notoriety. Um, so yeah, so Robert Palmer has a little bit of dubious reputation, so it's unsure how trustworthy he is. Again, these are all allegations, like you know, nothing can be quite proven just as yet, but it raises some doubt. And they're thinking, well, why can't we just have a closer look at the bones? Surely then that will be able to like alleviate some questions. Um, Unfortunately, it's hard to access a lot of specimens at this time. Um, what we have, the holotype of Dipotoraptor, we think is in the Palm Beach Museum of Natural History, which Robert De Palma helps run. Um, his colleagues say people are welcome to come see, but I haven't heard much of anyone who's been able to. Um, so, yeah, um, if you like, if anyone would like to get to the Palm Beach of Natural History and see if they can get it, that'll be great. It's currently in the Wellington Green Mall in Florida, so. Yeah, a little bit of a hard place to get to. Um, but yeah, in conclusion, mistakes happen, fraud can also happen, careful study and careful peer review is needed to ensure a healthy view of prehistoric animals and dinosaurs. Um, sharing information and cooperation is a really good way to help spell this, and that's kind of the whole point of peer review science, but there are some aspects that get in the way, um, possibly career building and other such things, and, you know, frauds and forgeries will be made if they can get notoriety and money out of them. So yeah, so just always be on the lookout. And yeah, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening.